Hello and welcome to this exclusive video part of the Terrace Podcast YouTube page. I am joined by Tony Anderson and we are going to be discussing Nick Montgomery's current standing at Easter Road. The man who replaced Lee Johnson was very much a popular pick amongst Hibs fans and started off pretty well, especially getting that 2 old come from behind result in the Edinburgh Derby, not losing a lot of games. It's not his players, blah, blah, blah. He's got his own style of play at a time where a lot of Teams in Scottish people don't seem to have a discernible yeah. style. It was all going very well, but the Christmas and New Year period wasn't great, was it, Tony? No, it was absolutely dreadful. Yeah, because it wasn't just it wasn't just defeats. It's the manner of the defeats. Like if you go to you go to St Johnston, you can't get a shot on target, mm. especially when you speak about obviously the style of play to be attacking. You have a lot of good attacking players on the pitch. That's why when you start thinking that lands at your tactics and your shape and stuff, rather than the players, because you're like, well, Boyle. Yuan, Vente, you're like, there's there's shots in there, at least. Very much at least shots. And you start, and that's when I, like, a lot of people are like, well, what's going on here? This start, you start thinking it lands at the manager's door mm-hmm. rather than just the just the players. And obviously a performance like that coming quite relatively deep into, his, into the campaign. And he's, he's, he's definitely, it's not his team, but he's been able to put his stamp on it, yes. if you like. Well, that's, that's a good point. As we're talking about January, like, now there's a month to go out and to go and bring in players and to make it his team and then hopefully to improve. But there's not been a sign of made so far. And of those linked with, with Hibs, it's not exactly immediately making Hibs fans go, oh, everything's going to be fine. It's the, the, what he said, which I think might have made, it makes it look like there's not been a lot of chatting between him and maybe other members of the board. I mean, the, you've got to assume that a big part of this is waiting for the Foley money and yeah. for that to be okay. I, was like, I think it's not that the Gordons wouldn't be willing to put any money in, but if you know money's coming, you're like, do I want to risk my own now? Was there, do I need to do that? So the biggest issue is that he came out and said, bluntly, I want players to come in who make an immediate impact. And we've barely, we haven't been linked with one. <laughs> who could do that? We've got Turi seems to be the one and the idea was he'd go back to on loan to Adley. That's absolutely fine, whatever. Then Chris Moore, is on trial over this the, the, from Leeds. Never played a professional football match in his life. <laughs> and that Adrian, who uh, looks like big, uh, hasn't played football uh, since like last year. I mean, sorry, hasn't played football this season due to whatever family issues. I'm not going to that. But also sounds like he's had quite a quite a lifestyle. Is right. a, is a, like some of the uh, his old manager said he he doesn't have the lifestyle to be a to be an athlete when he played in Turkey and stuff like he went away when he was injured rather than go to the games, he would go to France and play poker and and won like a poker tournament. So he sounds like a laugh, don't get me wrong. (laughs) Um, But again, even without that stuff that I'm kind of a from, I don't know anything about the guy really. But if you've not played football this season, that wouldn't say that he's going to be able to come in and and make an immediate impact, even if he is like a quality player. So then you're just like, "Ah, so what? We're getting late into the day. The SFA's obviously dragging their feet a bit with Foley. Who knows what's going on? It's it's uncharted territory like with the thing because of the multi-club thing. So I like there should maybe a scramble then. And with Montgomery's style, he's steadfast in a certain shape. And I know some people will say that like, your present your your shape when you're in possession, when you're out of possession, that's the reality. Yeah. Like, the, the tacticals would tell you all that. But when you want to play a four four two, regardless of that, you need very very specific players. Yeah, and that, that, that's very what I Specific say. roles. That's the problem. That's the problem he's got from now until the end of the season. And if and if Hibs are holding back any sort of funding and, until they see whether this Bill Foley is the the kind of backer of, of several teams who's interested in, in investing in Hibs, and it seems like you've said you think that he's basically Hibs are just going to basically give him the, or, or sell him the, the football side yeah, of things, it, it's and, it, and the Gordons will continue to run the rest of the club mm. with the commercial side of it, and 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 that that's that's my, that's the way it sounds to me. Because and if, this, if his money comes in this month, then you're kind of laughing because things that Hibs well Hibs definitely need a midfielder who could do a bit of everything but be especially good defensively so it has to be a good player but somebody's good defensively so we know the problem with that and when it comes to getting players on the cheap because when you get players on the cheap you get guys like Jimmy Jago yeah because you need a defensive midfielder Alex Gogic Alex Gogic like yeah. guys who could do the defensive side of it but they can't do the football playing no side of it passing. because they wouldn't be because that costs a lot of money yeah. to have somebody that's both a very good footballer and a centre midfielder and somebody who doesn't let opponents pass them who mm-hmm. can add that bit of dig that's desperately what Hibs needs that's the type of player that Sounds like it needs to cost you about five grand a week. The the rumour is that Zambrano 
who is an Ecuadorian footballer that uh, loads of big clubs have been after, that Bournemouth, or, 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 and Major Talk, I don't know, it's not, it sounded like it had been done and it hasn't, so I'm not sure it is, but in, in fully named Czech Hibs, talking about Zambrano as a player they were trying to get in, and then name checked Hibs as a place they would go to. He'd be costing Bournemouth like over six million pounds, right? And then he, the, the, the sounds of things is that he would go to to Hibs to play at the start. So that's the kind of thing that yes, that and his profile as a player would fit exactly what you are talking about is that he can screen, but he's can play progressively and he's an all action player. So it's exactly that sounded like that way it's going, but. I, I, he's not actually even signed for Bournemouth yet, and Foley's money's still not even here yet. So yeah, no, yeah. Foley's money's not here, and I suppose the the problem as well is that once Foley's money, if, if, if everything goes through okay, and, and Foley is able to invest in Hibs, and then the money comes, the problem with your Nick Montgomery does he remain in the job? Well, this is and I, not just Brian McDermott. Like yeah. everyone that's involved there. I say that it really does sound because just for so for context for for the viewer, it's the. The, 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 the Foley's, the Black Knights thing, and they're, they're backed by a multi-billion pound investment sports company in the US. So it's not, Foley's worth a couple of billion. Like yeah. He is a wealthy man, but he's not like, like the richest man in the world. Yeah. But his, he's fronting a, uh, with an investor that's from there, and they're the main investor. That was the, the, what my take from it. And they're a sports enterprise company, and they're involved in numerous sports in America, and they're branching out into football, and fully fronts it, and they, they pump the bit of money, and he has his own money, and there's multiple investors in it. But the whole point is they do like the most up-to-date training things, mm -hmm. nutrition, all that type of stuff. And I just can't... And then, obviously, the transfers, how they do all the data, all that's what they do. That's what their interest is in multiple sports. So that's why I think, well, they're not putting in the money to then let Ian Gordon use it. Like, <laughs> so, so the idea to me is that... It's all right, guys, I've got Y Scout fired yeah, up. Who would you like to say? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so for me, that that's that when I'm putting two and two together, I look at that, it's like, well, they're going to want control of the football side. They want to be able to use players and move them around different, the different elements of, of the, the clubs that they have. So that's why I come up with this. My theory is, is that Hibs have essentially given over the, the football side. And it would make sense. It's the bit that they've probably struggled with. The commercial has been really good. I mean, it's, it, it could be a bit... Overbearing. <laughs> for, uh, Would you like to buy this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not my favourite thing. The multi club thing's not my favourite thing, but I, I kind of just accept that football's going this way. Yeah. Do I hate it? But would I prefer him to just be at the front of it? Probably. Mm. I'll be dead in forty years, Max. Um, I just like to see us win stuff. So yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I just want to go to some trips. I went to I went to Switzerland. It was good, so I want to do that again. But that's that's the idea. I think that they're that they're going to do that. And Hibs, commercial side, the hospitality much better. It's miles better. I mean, you only have to remember going on to Twitter when the Hibs ran out of food. At the again, people were getting dry wraps. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> so they've improved that. I went. It was it was really really good. It was like fine dining. So all that's fine. So that's what but the context of it. I really think that Foley's not coming in just to chuck money at Hibs. No. They want they're coming in to invest and be in charge of how that money's spent. And as well, it'll be much easier to get rid of them if the fans are just like, yeah, we're we're already unsure about this guy. What is what's your take on Montgomery? And what would you think the general temperature is amongst the fans right now? Obviously, people not going overboard because he's not had a transfer window. Yeah, and that is absolutely fine. I think a lot of fans do like the idea of having a. Community's wanky language that people use these days, like the football identity and the philosophy, the IQ and philosophy, and all that shit that people say. <laughs> um, but people understand what I mean by that. Yeah. That Hibs will have that, and the idea is that Montgomery would build that in. The things that make me uncomfortable about Montgomery is that I find it bizarre that he's wedded to a formation. I don't really understand. Mm -hmm. Normally, with managers, they'd have preferred and they would have principles of play. Like, you know, like the, everyone plays, they play high energy, you play high pressing, you build from the back, all that's fine, but it doesn't matter how you actually set up, it'd be the principles of it. And he, he's just so steadfast on the two midfielders. I find that, I find that bizarre. I don't, like even when we're shutting games especially out. Especially when you've got Dylan Levitt as the sitting midfielder because he can't defend. Yeah, and it's, 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 especially when you're seeing games out, you won't change even then. Like you, you bring in different people. But you always keep the that exact same information. I, I find that weird. I don't. I never knew that when he came in. I was excited when Montgomery came. In. I think a lot of people were because it was a guy on the up and mm -hmm. a guy actually achieved something, and that was exciting because you don't normally get that. You get a guys off a merry go round or like a lot, a lot of us do now are, are promoting from within. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like, don't give them their first job. Yeah, with with young managers. So that's all. So so that was exciting. But the problem is with Montgomery. He's so sad. Like, and we spent 
this is where the club has to take responsibility because Montgomery's obviously said all this at an interview. It's very clear. I mean, this is all very obvious. How he plays, he's got that. This is what he's going to do. We'd spent the most ever. I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm throwing that line out there. But the most ever on transfer fees in the summer. I felt like for me anyway, I can't remember another time I've spent what must have been about two million quid yeah. nearly on, on just on actual fees. And it was on a, a winger, winger stroke striker in, in, in Yuan, a centre forward in Venti and uh, Dylan Levitt, who like they all, and then we spent, we also sp- spent in theory one and a half million pounds on Boyle in terms of the money we forego to, yeah. to have. You wrote off. Yeah. So there's only like, for, who all designed specifically to play in a 4 3 3. That's what they are. Mm. They are they're very much, and the club has said about that because they should have sat Johnson before it. They obviously didn't want to have him. You don't lose three games this entire season and get sat unless they wanted you out anyway. Yeah. And, and he still got a good result in that time by beating Lozell. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and, and he will tell you, and he would tell everyone at Fleetwood, <laughs> one of the best uh, <laughs> results Hibs have had in Europe in, in around 30 years. <laughs> Your fans were expecting you to beat yeah, us to yeah, off the back of it. Just insane. When I, when I, that, I, that is insane. You can't just say that. You can't just, you've just made up a hips fan. You've made up. You've met one hips fan in the street who's fucking drunk. Go <laughs> <laughs> beat Villa. Uh, you, you've taken that as that's the the temperature of the of the whole uh, of the whole fan base. But I think there's a lot. Of, there is people worrying. There's people worrying because. When we came in, we were having a lot of shots on goal, mm. and the more Montgomery is involved. It, 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 it's tailed off. I've got a theory. He got spooked massively at Ibrox when Hibs right. got beat 4-0. That's my, my, my feeling. This is, and this is the story of, this is where I think Dylan Venti's career sort of changed at, at Hibs was from that day. Before that, they were playing the 4-4-2, which borderline a 4-2-4. He'd done that at Ibrox. He actually kept you and Boyle high and wide in that game. And he got his fingers burnt. And then the next game, we played Celtic at Easter Road. Dylan Venti was used on Callum McGregor, who he was tracking all the time, and he went on and he done a really good job in that day. Tavares moved in from wide and played on the inside, so he's still playing four for two, but that guy much more narrow to get, and that was given much more protection in that that central area, and that's continued since. He lost to Fondra, who I think was really massive between the link between midfield yeah. and attack. He probably didn't even realise at the time quite how important that would be because now he uses Venti there. Is he supposed to be back? Is he even coming back? He's, he's training in Dubai. Right, okay. So they train that, and that meant that Venti could play that further forward, but then the Fondra not there. He ends up playing that role, and then Venti's. So he plays like a defensive striker now. Mm. And, and, and don't get it wrong, it's cool to see that Venti's got that. And if what I read, he did do, he did, he's a hard working striker, very hard working striker, but we got him barely any chances on goal. And now something that I've really disliked is putting Boyle up front. Because I always think you're taking one of your best players and if you have Boyle there, and the idea is obviously to stretch the team. I get it, I understand it. But you can only get Boyle into the game one way there. You can only yeah. go to the one, there's only one way of getting your best player onto the ball. And it's weird that he's doing that and having Eli Ewan still on the wide right. Because you and you has got more to his game than Boyle. Yeah, he can, that, play, he can play better when he's back to goal. Yeah, and, that's, and so you can go you can go over the top, you can go behind, you can buy a yard. He's good at finishing Ewan as well. He, he, he can score different types of goals. And plus, it would negate his negatives that when you play him in midfield, obviously he's going to do rad stuff. So yeah. Because he's, 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 he's a mercurial... He's, he's rad. Yeah, mercuri- <laughs> the way he plays the game, it's mer- rad. Mer- mercurial, mercurial player. So it is, the, the, the problem is, is that, yes, you can you could make them more rounded. He might be able to make you and Boyle all more rounded players, like what you do at the very top of the game, where the wide players do loads, and they can, they do track back, and they're all fit as fuck, and they can do absolutely everything. That'll take ages, man. That'll take ages. And it'll take longer than what it does with other players, because they're not that good. So what do you think for the rest of the season? Because it, it's starting, we're halfway through the month, so in terms of the, the full money coming in and him's been able to, to sign what they want, or maybe even just having a clear plan of wh- what do we have? Like, what's our strategy? Because we don't know exactly what we're doing. Time's running out for that. Are you confident that things are going to be okay and they're going to bring in players or do you think it's just, this is going to be a bit, almost like a, a kind of, a ship just kind of sailing along for the meantime and it's just kind of waiting on, on a transformative summer? I think that's, that's what, that would be my gut and instinct to what's going on. And if happen. it is, Montgomery's in trouble, isn't I it? I think he's really in trouble because now he's, he's taking a job but he's not going to have the, the players to do what he wants mm. to do. And that's partly his fault as well. He's, mm-hmm. he's too grounded in something. He's not willing to show any flexibility then that's going to be his fault. And I say that he's asking, he's, he, his way is negating Hibs' best players. And that yeah. Venti, Boyle, Yuan, and Levitt. Like, I mean, in Levitt, I mean, Levitt, you now, you start thinking, how good is that Levitt? I mean, it's, he's just one of those players that you always think is, when the going's good, Levitt looks great. 
when the minute it starts to go badly, it's like Aye. this guy's fucking hopeless. But uh, he's made George Tavares a lot better. And he's, but that again, and this is a bit that I wanted to go on to. My main worry with Montgomery. See, at first when he'd done the... He's boring, right? Let's let's be frank. Yeah, sure. Across extremely boring, like, and, I, and, I, and I'm and I and after Johnson it was kind of what he wanted, yeah, though, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? So, but and, and and the balance between that is that I thought that at first I was thinking, right, he really doesn't. He, he came across that he really didn't like the the media work, and that is fine. I, I don't mind that if that's what you want to do. You just want to get away from it as quickly as possible. That's absolutely fine. But once it starts going badly, mm. then and then. And, and I don't know if he's doing it to protect the players, but he keeps on saying that the performances are good. He had a bit of a Cathro moment for me after the derby when he said that was a good advert because that was one of the worst football matches I've ever been in. And I mean that because the derbies, normally the ball's changing hands all the time, but that's because it's 100 miles per hour. It wasn't. It was a slow game. It wasn't played and, and to the point that everyone must have been steaming in that ground. They'd been drinking for three days. Mm. Right? And the atmosphere went shit. And I mean that in the heart side and the hips side. I remember going like that. This is an eight o'clock at night game. People have been drinking since Christmas Day. People are absolutely cart horsed in here, and people are just standing watching, yeah, like desperate to leave. You think it would be poisonous and loud? It wasn't. Like even the Hearts fans, like, just, people just could stop being a bit arsed because it was, it was mental how bad it was. It's it was like really bad. Just game. giving the ball away, like when they're on the, and then him to come out and say that, you're like, and he was talking about good performances the other game, and you know you've played shit, and it's like, why are you saying that? Like, like so it's either you're either because then you get to the point that you're either delusional. Or you're lying. <laughs> but, um, and I don't mind if it's to protect the players, but I don't think he's got the media presence yeah. to really play, the, to play this game. It just comes across. Like, they, like before the Aberdeen game, when he said, uh, the, the se a semi-final of a cup. Oh, we just, I just hope the best team wins in the game. What the fuck are you on about? No, I don't give a shit about that. This isn't the... This isn't the Which is not what happened. This is, yeah, exactly. This is not what happened. It's not the fucking A-League, man. This is real stuff. People fucking are massive in here. This is... We hate them. We hate them. And everyone's angry. And people want that. So, again, I, I don't want to blame him too much because, he's, again, he's, had, he's, he's not got his own players and he's, he's coming and taught them exactly what he wants to do and, and he's been put in there. But it's starting to look... A lot of things are trying to work against them with the Foley stuff. He'll act like he wants that. And they'll have their own guys in mind, almost certainly. Yeah. And if he's not got backing of the fans, then he's really, really going to struggle because they'll just they'll be able to get him to and everyone will just shrug their shoulders. And it might end up for Montgomery that he goes on and has a good career elsewhere. But it's starting to get that wee niggling thing in the back mm. of your mind. This might not work out for, for him. For him. It just might have been... It sounded great for him at the time to come over and have some back to it and they really wanted it and it seemed exciting, but there's that. But when you have the, the media work and the way he's been speaking, his steadfast nature with things, he's negating his best players. He's not giving himself a chance to buy himself the time that he needs. And this is what happens when you've got a philosophy, an identity. If you dig your heels in so much, do you ever get the time here? Mm. You were talking about one, you were talking about the lower league one there, about Queen's Park, how nobody ever sees through any of these. Yeah, I sees through any long-term strategy plans. The, the, like the 10-year plan, yeah. playing the Dutch way and bringing through players and trying to make them like Ajax of the Scottish lower leagues. And then after two years, the guy who you've charged with this, the kind of director of football, basically, he leaves, your manager's at his depth, you sack him, and then you bring in Callum Davidson. Yeah, it's complete. And now let's say this this is what kind of looks like what, what might end up happening with, with Montgomery, because right? he needs a huge one. He'll have Chris Cadden back, who looks much more like the player that might work in the, in the way that he's playing, but then you're not playing your best players. I think Montgomery's got some really brave things he's going to have to do and probably pissing off some of the best players to do it, to get the way that he wants it to work. And then that's huge money that Hibs have lost right away then and players that you know are good you know they, they have they have performed so I, I've got a niggler with them and like I said it's hard to really back him as well because you don't really get anything from him he doesn't get me excited at all like yeah. as, 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 as a manager so I, I think he's it's, it's, I, I, it doesn't sound like it's going to go exactly how everyone would have th thought it was going to Right, I think that'll do us. Thank you very much, Tony. No, anytime. And thank you to everybody for watching. If you enjoyed that, please make sure to like and subscribe and share it amongst your friends as well. Goodbye. Bye.